It's all very intriguing, but I'm not clear yet what you want me to do in this matter, Mr. Mason. Can't you make it more definite? Perhaps this will make it more definite, Mr. Holmes. Uh, perhaps it will. Good Lord. A charred fragment of bone. Where did you get it? There's a central heating furnace in the cellar beneath Lady Beatrice's room. Harvey, he's one of the stable lads, has charge of it. He found the bone when he was raking the cinders this morning. He didn't like the look of it. Why? What do you make of it, Watson? It's the upper condyle of a human femur. Exactly what I thought. These are deep waters, Mr. Mason. And rather murky. I believe, Watson, that you know something of racing. I don't follow you. Does the name Sir Robert Norburton mean anything to you? Mm, I should say it does. He lives at Shoscombe Old Place. You've been there? My summer quarters were down there once. Summer quarters? Mm, when I was a medical student. Oh. Uh, tell me about Sir Robert Norburton. What manner of man is he? There was a most unsavoury type. Sam Brewer. The money lender, the mm. one who has premises in Curzon Street. That's the fellow. It happened on Newmarket Heath. Norberton was already pretty deep in when he asked for an extension of credit. Brewer refused him, point blank. And he wasn't exactly discreet about it either. Norberton saw Red and took a horsewhip to him. Brewer was lucky to get away with his life. What a remarkable character. He has the name of being a very dangerous man. He's just about the most daredevil rider in England. Second in the Grand National a few years back. Yes, I remember it. He's one of those men who's been born out of his time. He should have been a buck in the days of the Regency. A boxer, an athlete, a plunger on the turf, a lover of fair ladies. And, by all accounts, so far down Queer Street that he may never find his way back again. Capital, Watson. A perfect thumbnail sketch. <laughs> I would listen to know the man. Now, can you give me some idea of Shostakovich's old place? No, I can't tell you about the house. It's supposed to go back centuries. But for the past 20 years, it's been the home of the Shoskum stud. The training quarters are there too. And the head trainer is John Mason. Mm. How do you know that? There's nothing surprising about my knowing it, Watson. I happen to have received a letter from him. But tell me more about Shoskum. I seem to have struck a rich vein. There are the Shoskum Spaniels, of course. You hear of them at every dog show. No. Oh. They're the most exclusive breed in England. And the special pride of the lady of Shoskum Old Place. Yes, Sir Robert Norberton's wife, I presume. Good Lord, no. Robert is never married. Just as well, I should think, considering his prospects and his reputation. He lives with his widowed sister, Lady Beatrice Falder. You mean that she lives with him? No, 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 no. That's not what I meant at all. The house belonged to her late husband, Sir James Falder. Her brother has no claims on it at all. He's a devil of a fellow. I must lead her a much uneasy life. Yet I have heard that she's devoted to him. And to the Shoscombe Spaniels. And to the Spaniels, yes. But what is the trouble at Shoscombe? Ah, here I expect is the man who will enlighten us. Mr. John Mason. The same. Mr. Holmes. Uh, first of all, I think that my employer, Sir Robert, has gone mad. <laughs> what makes you say so? Well, sir, when a man does one queer thing, or two queer things, there may be a meaning to it. But when everything he does comes into that category, then you begin to wonder. I believe Shoscombe Prince, the Derby, have turned his brain. Shoscombe Prince is a coat you're running? The best in England, Doctor. I should know if anyone does. I've had my eye on him since he first got up on his legs. Now, I'll be playing with you, for I know you're a gentleman of honor and you won't go beyond this room. That goes without saying, Mr. Mason. Thank you, Doctor. Sir Robert has got to win the Derby. He's up to his neck in trouble, and it's his last chance. Everything he could raise or borrow, he's put on Shoscombe Prince. And a fine arts, too. Oh, you can get 40s now, but it was nearer the 100 when he began to back him. But how is that? You say that the horse is so good. The public doesn't know how good he is. Ah. Sir Robert has been too clever for the touts. He's been taking the prince's half-brother out for spins around the park. You can't tell them apart. Ah. But there are two lengths and a furlong between them when it comes to a gallop. Mm -hmm. His whole life is on it. 
He's holding off the money lenders till then. If the prince fails him, he's finished. Why, Mr. Holmes, you only have to look at him. I don't believe that he's had a wink of sleep this past month. He's down at the stable at all hours, day and night. His eyes are wild, staring out of his head. And then there's his conduct towards Lady Beatrice. Ah, what is that? Sir Robert and his sister always used to be the best of friends, Mr. Holmes. They had the same tastes, and she loved the horses as much as he did. Every day at the same hour, she'd drive down to see them. And above all, she loved the prince. He would prick up his ears as soon as he heard the wheels on the gravel, and he'd trot out each morning to a carriage to get his lump of sugar. <laughs> but that's all over now. Why? Well, she suddenly seems to have lost all interest in the horses. For a week now, she has driven past the stables with never so much as a good morning. Do you think there's been a quarrel? I'm certain of it, and a bitter, savage, spiteful quarrel of that. Why else? Should he give away her pet spaniel that she loved as if it were a child? He gave it away? Only a few days ago, Sir Robert gave it to old Josiah Barnes that keeps the Green Dragon. It doesn't account for Sir Robert going off to the old crypt in the middle of the night. Nor does it help to explain who the man is that he meets there. Ah. Tell us all about the old crypt. It's a godforsaken place and known to be haunted. The crypt is part of Shoscombe Old Place, I take it? No, sir. It's about half a mile from the house. It was the old family burial chapel. All the folders have been laid to rest there for centuries. It's a ruin now and stands all alone in the park. And under the chapel, there's a crypt. Some say it goes back to Saxon times. It's a dark, damp, creepy place, even by daylight. And no one dares venture there after dark. And there's a story that one of the ancestors of Lady Beatrice's late husband, they call him the Black Folder, walks every night in the dark of the moon. But this Black Folder holds no terrors for Sir Robert, I think. <laughs> Take more than that to frighten him. And what of this man he meets there by night? Well, Stevens the butler first suspected something was up just a few nights ago. He came over to the stables the following morning to tell me about it. It must have been nearly midnight. It was raining hard, as could scarcely have escaped your notice, Mr. Mason. I saw him go out by the side door beneath the North Tower. Well, that's his own affair, surely. Perhaps he just slipped out to meet some fancy woman. In the old crypt. Mind you, some people do have very peculiar taste. How could you be sure he was going to the old crypt? He must have given some kind of signal, for there was an answering lantern flash from by the ruined chapel. The devil could be doing that. I can't imagine this. Have a care, gentlemen. The stair is steep, and the treads are worn away. The place smells vilely. The dead don't smell sweet. There are nine centuries of them in this place. But you gentlemen must be accustomed to this kind of thing. Uh, every place seems to have its own aura. I feel that we're in the presence of some mysterious evil. Coffins of lead, coffins of stone, coffins of wood. Piled up on top of one another. Uh, who can tell what strange causes and effects there may be beyond the veil? Uh, kindly be our guide to this place, Mr. Porfer. Who is buried here? Oh, I only wish I could tell you, Mr. Portmore. I know the recent ones, of course. Those from the 16th century onwards. They're all the wooden coffins stacked over there. Hmm. The last Lord Calder, Lady Beatrice's husband, is the one on top. Ah. And the coffins of stone? Oh, some of them are said to go back before the conquest. But they contain nothing more than dust. Dust and a few scraps of bone. Quite, quite. And the, uh, the lead coffins here? Oh, they're mostly from medieval times. And what can you tell me about the coffin there? The one that stands beside the stair? Oh, my God. May the Lord save us. What's the matter, man? It's never stood there before. Well, I stake my life on it. It can't have moved itself. What is happening in this place? That is precisely what Dr. Gurney and I are here to investigate. Now, Mr. Potterman, it would be as well, I think, if you were to leave us. Oh, if that's what you wish, sir. Mm, the test that we have to carry out will only be hampered by the presence of anyone not accustomed to our methods. But you will close the vault when you leave? Rest assured, mm. Mr. Potterman. Then I'll leave you to it, gentlemen. Hmm. Thank you for all your help, Mr. Palfreyman. A pleasure, gentlemen. A pleasure. Let's just make certain that he's really going the way Watson is a good fellow. Mm. Yes. He's walking off quite briskly. Huh. Probably wants to get back to the bottle of gin again. Mm. 
about it. It's time to lay the ghosts of Shoscombe Chapel. Let's take a closer look at the coffin by the stairs. Seemed to give Mr. Palfreyman quite a fright. Should have done. Now look closely, Watson, at the edges of the coffin lid. Mm -hmm. Someone's cut along the whole line of it. Mm -hmm. It's only secured by these two clamps. That should be an easy matter to open it up. You have the jemmy. Uh, uh, in my pocket. Here. Yes, uh, now, then. Excellent. Now, help me up with the lid. Good Lord. Who the devil are you? What do you think you're doing? What the hell are you doing on my property? Do you hear me? Who are you? Sir Robert Norberton, I believe. I have a question to ask you. Who is this within the coffin? What is this body doing here? Oh, came into none of this. What business is it of yours? My name is Sherlock Holmes. Possibly it's familiar to you. In any case, my business is that of every other good citizen to uphold the law. It seems to me that you have much to answer for. Before God, Mr. Holmes, I swear to you that it is not as it seems. Appearances are against me, I admit. But I could act no otherwise. I should be happy to think so. But I fear your explanations must be for the police. Well, if it must be, it must be. Come up to the house with me, and you can judge for yourself how the matter stands. So, what do you suppose Sir Robert needs to do now? To present us with a justification of his strange conduct, Watson. What else? Do you believe that he murdered his sister? That was Lady Beatrice in the coffin, I take it. Oh, most certainly. As for his guilt, I prefer to reserve my judgment till I've heard what he has to say. Mark my words, Sir Robert is a desperate man to take any course that will save you. I refuse to be dragged into this. There's nothing to do with me. If you know it's good for you, you'll do as Sir Robert says. For God's sake, keep quiet, both of you. Well, I've had my say. Who are these people, Sir Robert? And what have they to do with the case? They are Mr. and Mrs. Norlet. Mrs. Norlet, under her maiden name of Evans, has for some years been my sister's confidential maid. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Good evening. I have decided that my best, indeed my only course, is to explain the true position to you, Mr. Holmes. And these are the only two people on earth who can substantiate what I say. I had nothing to do with it. It wasn't my idea. Will you hold your tongue? I will take all the responsibility upon myself, Norlet. And you have nothing to fear. You've left it a bit late to tell me that. You've gone pretty deeply into my affairs, Mr. Holmes, or I should have not found you where I did. Well, you came to be there, I cannot imagine. You obviously know very little of my colleagues' reputations. I know that you're running a dark horse for the Derby, Sir Robert, and that you've staked everything upon it. I've staked my life upon it, Mr. Holmes. If I win, all is easy. And if you lose? I dare not think of it. I cannot think of it. We understand all that very well, Sir Robert. I am dependent upon my sister, Lady Beatrice, for everything. For the estate, for the horses, for the very clothes on my back. It's always been my greatest fear that if my sister were to die, my creditors would be onto the estate like a flock of vultures. Everything would be seized on my stables, my horses, everything. Well, Mr. Holmes, my sister did die. Just a week ago. And you told no one. What could I do? I was faced with absolute ruin. If I could only stay things off for three weeks, everything would be well. My sister's maid's husband, this man here, is an actor. I've told you, I won't be dragged into this. It came into our heads. I had nothing whatever to do with it. It wasn't it my idea. It came into my head that he could, for that short period, impersonate my sister. It was but a case of appearing daily in the carriage. No one else ever saw her, you see, except for me. What was the cause of your sister's death? She died of dropsy, Dr. Watson. She'd been suffering from it for years. That'll be a matter for the coroner to decide. So what did you do? The body could not remain here at Shoscombe. On the first night, Norlet and I carried it into the old well house, which is now never you. He forced me into it. I had no wish to be part of such a thing. Unfortunately, her pet spaniel refused to leave her side and wailed so piteously that it was essential to get rid of it as quickly as possible. There seems to be precious little that you two haven't discovered. <laughs>